Hey, Kay. I'm excited to share with you guys a little information. Um, I was thinking about it because we're doing a detox challenge, as you all know. I, I like to lead a detox challenge every three months, and we're doing this starting November 1st. And why do we do a detox? Why are you? There we go. It paused. Uh, why do we do a detox challenge? It's because we are inundated with so many toxins, right? So what I wanna do is share with you all why I quit alcohol six years ago. One of the reasons is because it made me feel sick. <laughs> and another reason is I was doing a lot of research around the liver and I realized that alcohol can be very toxic to the liver and the liver cells. Now, your liver is an incredible organ because what it does is it cleanses toxins out of your blood and packages up chemicals and heavy metals, etc., into the bile. So I'll give you a little backstory on the functionality of your liver and gallbladder, and um, hopefully you all can avoid some of the issues that I had. So, I think that my problems go back to the fact that I have the MTHFR defect. Does anyone else have that? About 40% of Americans have this. They say, some even say up to 50%. And MTHFR is a, a defect that you can have as it relates to methylation. And you need to methylate nutrients that you ingest to make them bioavailable to your cells. So the problem with the methylation defect is you might not have as efficient detoxification pathways. And so people that drink alcohol and feel a headache or feel a hangover the next day, and maybe they only drink a half a glass, maybe they have a methylation defect. Maybe they are deficient in some B vitamins, which also support these detox pathways. So the problem is, if you have that issue and you're trying to just be like everybody else and having a glass of wine here and there and you know just doing it for fun and it makes you feel sick, then maybe it's something you shouldn't do anymore. And my sister and I both actually experienced this where we would drink a half a glass, literally a half a glass of wine and feel so sick the next day. Super bad hangover, just really sluggish and horrible feeling. Have any of you guys felt that way? I mean, it was kind of miserable because we were going to fancy parties for our company, going on getaway trips that we earned, and there's always alcohol at these events. And at home, I wouldn't normally drink alcohol, but when I go on events, go to these events, I would drink wine with dinner or, you know, have a cocktail when, when they're getting passed around for free at these parties. <laughs> and I would just feel so crappy. And literally having only one, drink and that is how I would feel so I made the decision I just got to give it up and so I quit it and honestly the funniest thing happened I used to think about when we would get together we would have a glass of wine you know girls night out those kinds of things are you guys with me on this am I just talking to myself here because <laughs> I remember just feeling like oh it sounds like such a fun thing to do go out for a glass of wine or have a cocktail with girlfriends downtown something like that you know once a month or whatever but the problem is I always felt sick when I did it and so then I decided that is it I just need to totally cut alcohol out of my life because it truly doesn't make me feel well so then I started learning about the liver and the functionality of the liver it's a very very cool organ so I'll share some of this with you and hopefully you guys are interested in learning about this part of your body because I do think it's very important and very special uh, how it works so when I like I was sharing everything that we ingest everything we put on our skin anything that we breathe in if it has toxins in it then we have to process it and get it back out right or the toxins can build up. And, and this is an interesting part about the body too. Your body will actually store toxins in fat cells. And I do believe the body has a protective mechanism in not releasing weight if the detox pathways are blocked because your body is protecting your vital organs and your brain from the toxins. And so that can play a role in people's people not feeling like they can release the weight. Have any of you guys ever thought about that? 
or realize that could be possible. Um, they often say that these chemicals and heavy metals are fat soluble. And that means is they're being stored in the fat cells. <laughs> so your body, like I said, is trying to keep that away from vital organs and the nervous system and the brain. Um, so what um, I, as I learned about the liver and this whole process, is your toxins as they come through the liver go through phases of detox in the in the liver and, and it goes through certain processes to package up toxins and eventually toxins end up into bile bile molecules are you guys familiar with bile type the word bile if you know what i'm talking about and if you don't we're gonna go there too so let me have a sip <laughs> So the thing about the bile, and, and, and actually I did learn this the hard way because I was having right upper quadrant pain, and some of you guys remember this from years back. Oh my gosh, I was just having all these problems in my right upper quadrant. And I would go in and they do imaging and I did an endoscope and they tested me for celiacs and they tested me for H. pylori and I mean, just what a saga. And so what happened then was uh, at that point, they decided to remove my gallbladder. Now, we did pathology on the gallbladder and there was no stones and no sludge and no inflammation. So essentially it was a healthy gallbladder that was removed. Now the doctor at that time did not tell me that if you have your gallbladder removed, you have to take pancreatic enzymes and ox bile for the rest. And oh, I forgot to mention prior to that, I was um, having all this pain, right? And so my doctor put me on Prilosec and, or Nexium, and who's ever taken Prilosec or Nexium? Um, those are called the proton pump, oops, there we go, uh, PPI. So type the word Nexium or Prilosec if you've ever taken it, or PPI if you've had a proton pump inhibitor. Well, what I've learned is it's really bad, okay? This is so bad and so backwards. A lot of times people are told they're producing too much acid and that's why they have acid reflux or pain, et cetera, et cetera. No, the truth is your pancreatic enzymes, as we get older, you start to produce less. And when you produce less enzymes, then it doesn't tell the stomach to make as much stomach acid. And so then you actually have low stomach acid, which leads to this reflux is issue. I know it doesn't make sense, it sounds backwards. But the problem is that when you are having this issue and they put you on the PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, guess what? That raises your risk of cancer, like exponentially, it's horrible. I cannot even believe that they sell those medications over the counter and I want to implore you to really research any time that you're about to grab a Tylenol, an Advil, a proton pump inhibitor, because these things are sold over the counter and I think that there's this general sense that they're safe. That is not true, that is not true. In fact, Tylenol I've read is one of the leading causes of death. So sad, because everyone thinks Tylenol is so safe. It's horrible, it's, it's a horrible medication to give a child, especially after they've been you know what this means, right? I'm not saying the word. But anyway, back to my story. <laughs> so your liver has to process these toxins and all those over-the-counter meds that people think are safe, right? Who, who believes that an over-the-counter medication is safe? I mean, just, yes, I know, I used to be one of those people. I'd be typing in the comments, yes, I used to think they were safe. But now I know better, they are not safe. And there's a natural alternative out there. And so with uh, the, the way your liver processes these toxins that we ingest or that we put on our skin or that we breathe in, okay? And um, one thing that's crazy that is really prevalent in and toxic in the body, which I know because my husband and I can order testing for people. It's called a, um, uh, oh my gosh. Oh, what's the word? The GLP tox test. So it's a um, Great Plains Lab, GPL, <laughs> GPL, not GLP, <laughs> GPL um, toxin test. And it's a urine test that you can take and it will show you all of these chemicals that are in the body. And guess what? The most prevalent, one of the most prevalent chemicals is for my kids, my husband and myself, this is nuts. Can you guys guess what toxin do you think it is? Okay. It's a little bit different for each of us. It's a different molecular structure for each of us. 
but it is fuel additives. Fuel additives. So warning, warning, warning. When you're pumping fuel, stand up wind from it. Don't breathe in the smell of gasoline. You know, that is a toxin. You're breathing it in and it's storing up in the body, okay? Again, everything we breathe in, everything we put on the skin, it has to be processed by the liver. And or everything we eat or drink, okay? Alcohol, that's a huge one. So if you wanna reduce your toxic load, cut out alcohol. That was one of the things I learned six years ago. Now, the reason that this is important for you to understand is your liver is very, very good at regenerating. And I, I am doing a group on detox. So if you wanna join that group, type detox. And we are going to be doing a special detox starting on November 1st. There's a little kit that you'll order and um, so you can join in on, on that. It's open to absolutely everybody. It's not a, it's not a secret group, <laughs> but it's where my husband and I will be leading you in how to detox and we're both functional medicine practitioners. He is a PA and I have three years of training with Dr. Cabral. Anyway, the back to this liver thing, which is, I think this is so fascinating. And um, I'm gonna share a lot of details in the detox group on this, but this is cool. Okay, so your liver goes through these phases of detox, packaging up chemicals, heavy metals, etc. Some of them sadly do get stored in fat cells throughout the body. Um, your, your thyroid, if any of you guys have had issues with thyroid, type thyroid if you have been on thyroid medications or you know someone on thyroid meds or you've had nodules, cysts, goiter, whatever, okay? This is important. Um, and then I'll get back to the liver in a minute. But the thyroid is your canary in the coal mine. And I was describing this to two 20-something-year-olds uh, that were here at our ranch over the weekend. They didn't know what canary in the coal mine was. Do you guys know what canary in the coal mine is? Um, back in the days of mining, which if you don't know, I'm not surprised, but I'm such a fanatic researcher. I learned this because I've read about mining a lot, which is, I know it sounds weird, but I have. Um, anyway, they would keep a canary in a cage in a, in a coal mine because when there were toxic fumes, the canary would die. And so it's called the canary in the coal mine because that's kind of your red flag signal. Something desperately needs to be done. So if you have any thyroid issues or know anyone with thyroid issues, breast issues, prostate issues, canary in the coal mine. There is uh, certain toxins that have built up in your body and there's a certain mineral nutrient that you are deficient in that is very inexpensive, very easy to obtain, and you can detox the chemicals out of the body, which are affecting the thyroid, the prostate, the breasts, whichever, wherever it is you're having issues. And I say this because the, um, all the cells in the body need thyroid hormone. But guess what? Thyroid hormone is created from iodine. And if you're deficient in iodine, your body will try and substitute other molecules such as chlorine, chloride, fluorine, fluoride, bromine, bromide. And these are very prevalent in today's society, especially in processed foods, as well as in water treatment and um, dental products. And these are very, very, very extremely tox toxic to our bodies. They affect our brain, they affect our thyroid's ability to function properly. And so if you're thyroid deficient, or sorry, iodine deficient, then the thyroid tries to grab those molecules and substitute them for the iodine deficiency because your thyroid hormone is made from iodine, okay? T3 what they test for, T3 and T4, those are utilizing three molecules of iodine, T3. Three molecules of iodine, that's the thyroid hormone called T3. Do you guys know what I'm talking about here? Is this totally off the wall? Or are you picking up what I'm laying down? <laughs> I always feel like I go into these tangents and sometimes people are like, what in the world? <laughs> so and then T4 is your thyroid hormone, and guess how many molecules of iodine that uses? Four molecules of iodine, okay? So it's very, very important that you are getting adequate doses of iodine. Now here's the big ringer of a problem, okay? Who has heard of the USRDA? If you've heard of USRDA, please type I have heard of it in the comments because USRDA is what you see when you look at a label. For example, 
I'm gonna show you something here, okay? This has a label called Supplement Facts, right? Supplement Facts, I know it's backwards for you, but you know what I'm talking about. It's the black and white label on all products that we ingest. Now, here's the thing. When we look at, this is so crazy, and Rob would tell you this, and we're going to go live again tomorrow night, so don't just make sure you set your timers, or, you know, not your timers, but <laughs> set, follow, or see first, or whatever you do on Facebook, so that you are notified when we go live or when we post, because um, Facebook is censoring me very heavily, so any of you that are catching this right now, I can't even believe that you were notified I was live, to be honest, so thanks for hopping on and commenting, because that helps get this out to more people. Also, it helps to bring my posts back up into your newsfeed again when I go live. Okay, so back to our supplement facts here. Here's what I want you to notice when you're looking at supplement facts, okay? And this relates to the iodine very importantly because the daily value is, you're never gonna believe this, um, it's a value that was created to keep rats alive, okay? Like, come on, rats to keep rats alive. Now, Rob said this to me last night. I didn't go verify it, so feel free to go verify it. If you would like, I would be happy if you did that. Because you know I'm all about verifying, bringing receipts, references, citing references, etc. So I'm just citing my husband's knowledge on that. But I was like, what? How can that be to keep rats alive? Okay, so then I was thinking about it. Now, let me go back to the iodine, okay? Let me go back to the iodine. Now, the US RDA recommended daily allowance of iodine is 200 micrograms. I'm sorry, but that is not enough. That is not enough. It is so inadequate. It is so inadequate that it makes my head spin after researching this. And I want you guys to dig in and do the research as well. But essentially, your US RDA for iodine is so deficient that of course you're gonna develop thyroid problems, breast C, prostate C, because these are, um, I wanna say glands, that utilize iodine for healthy metabolism and um, production of hormones, okay? Are you guys understanding what I'm saying here? So people here in the United States are being told to take an inadequate amount of iodine, which is leading to all kinds of cancers because I, 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 I'm trying not to say that word, okay? Because this is what Facebook censors me for. But think about this. If people are being told to take inadequate amounts of a mineral that their body needs for healthy metabolism and healthy hormone production. And then we're getting all kinds of big C all around the place. Um, and then it's the month of October and we do all of this awareness, but yet we're not getting to the root cause. Do you see how this can really be like, make you think it's a conspiracy on purpose? Are you guys with me on that? I mean, you know how I get. I get really, really mad about stuff that where people are taken advantage of and they're not being told the truth. And I know that there's many of you that follow me that feel that way. And um, it's maddening. So back to how you can protect yourself is you've got to get adequate amounts of iodine. And there is a book called The Iodine Crisis. I literally talk about it every single day. I, I write about it in my groups. I write about it in other groups I'm a member of. Um, anytime people say they have a thyroid issue or breast or prostate or, I mean, there's a long list, uh, it can come back to this simple addition of a mineral called iodine in your diet. And it is not an expensive thing to add to your diet. Not at all. Not at all. In fact, they say 95% of people are iodine deficient here in the US because it's absent from our soils because they've sprayed so much and a lot of the sprays bind up the minerals that are naturally occurring, okay? And then they're not found in our foods. Do you guys see how this vicious cycle plays out? Anyway, I know I went and started this video about why I quit alcohol six years ago, but then I got on this tangent about your thyroid and iodine <laughs> because it is literally that important and I don't get sick talking about it. Okay, so back to Oh, the reason I was mentioning it was because of this USRDA bullcrap and um, inadequate recommendations from people, I just tell you. So what I guess I want to impress upon you is consider giving up alcohol for the rest of the year. Just consider it. 
What would it hurt? It would be supportive to your liver, supportive to your kidneys. It would be beneficial to all the systems and functions of your body. And it's going to help you make a conscious choice every day for what, what you need to be ingesting. Because everything that you ingest either heals or harms. Think about it. Everything you ingest, I want you to write that down and stick it on your mirror. Everything I ingest either heals or harms. And if you think about it that way, then you're like, well, wait a minute then. Drinking alcohol, that's not healing. Do you see where I'm going with that? If that's not healing, then why am I doing it? Okay, so if you want more info on detox, you want to join my group called Detox Life, just type detox in the comments and I will uh, comment back with you to, to just link up and go to that group. It's super easy to join. It's on Facebook. I know that there's probably a better way and I really should think of a better way. I kind of have a, in my mind that I'd like to create an app to help you guys stay plugged in every day. Would you guys like that? <laughs> I'd have to keep my videos shorter. Um, I am in my detox group doing a daily video on detox where I'm going to teach you about an herb or I'm going to teach you about a function in the body. I'm going to teach you about a therapy that you could incorporate into your daily life. And if you want to join, just type detox. If you made it to the end of my video, uh, type the end. <laughs> and if you caught the replay, just type replay because every comment that you make helps to boost this information in the newsfeed. And as you know, anything natural is highly censored because it goes against the agenda and the agenda is powerful. But I truly believe God gave us all of the gifts. God gave us all of the solutions and Christ is King. So thank you for joining today. I'm closing all of my videos with that. Christ is King because I truly believe it and I think more of us need to say it and just name it and claim it. So thanks for being here with me. I wish you many blessings and good health, finances and family. And I'll see you in my group. I just did make my video over there for today and it's not a long video, it's a short video, actually much shorter than this one. But you know how I get, I start chatting with you all and then I get another idea and I got to talk about that one and then you guys comment and I got to talk about that one. So <laughs> thanks for hopping on. It's really truly my goal to make a video for you every day. And when I comment Christ is King, I want you to type the prayer hands or the little crown in the comments because this is a movement and I'm happy that you're part of it. Okay, sending you so much love. I'm out to see the horses. We're gonna be moving them out onto pasture and it's very exciting. And Josh, I saw you on here. So bring that new mare over here. Let's go riding. Okay, love you guys. Bye.